定有方法为所有人提供更清洁的能源。Il faut trouver un moyen d'en finir avec la faim dans le monde. Tiene que haber una manera de aprender más y más rápido. There must be a way to save more lives. It's high-speed connectivity. It's sustainable farming. It's better diagnostics and treatments. It's cleaner energy. It's what makes our future possible. Let's celebrate what light can do for all of us. So welcome everybody to the International Day of Light. Uh, Shum, uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, so we have our team members here, uh, our amazing team members. We have Mr. Shubham, Analyst, Marketing and Communications, Pirelli India. We have Mr. Abhishek Deswal, Business Analyst Operations, Load Share Networks, also from India, and the smart guy in between them. Uh, Rishabh, production head, Alankar International Corp, and creative head, Shamta Foundation, also from India. So, what is uh, the International Day of Light? Uh, as you all know, light uh, plays an important role in our life. Uh, IDL is an initiative which appreciates its roles in science, med medicine, sustainable development, communications, etc. The goal of uh, IDL is to bring people's attention and focus towards light, which is uh, being taken for granted. Light is something without which human existence is not possible. Going ahead, I would uh, like to bring your attention to uh, uh, to the steering committee. Uh, so IDL is supported by these world-renowned organizations. Uh, and we are basically doing this uh, event in association with SPI, SPIE. Moving forward to the global footprints, the as you can see, uh, the yellow marks on the map uh, on the slide, we have conducted 13,168 events in, 140, in more than 140 countries, reaching hundreds of millions. Overwhelmed by the response, UNESCO declared 16th May as uh, the International Day of Light. Uh, further, I would like Mr. Uh, Abhishek to explain us uh, about light. Oh, yeah. Hi, uh, greetings all. I think there is some technical issue. Now you guys will ask you what is the, uh, like what's the difference between these two? I tell you, in specular reflection, whenever light falls on a smooth surface, it reflects back uniformly. That is what we call specular reflection. In diffused reflection, whenever light falls on an uneven surface, it doesn't reflect uniformly. It reflects on different angles. And that's what we call diffused reflection. So we'll see the example of diffused uh, reflection in the next slide. So Shivam, I'll uh, request you to change the slide. Yeah. So like uh, seeing the image of the sea waves here, as you all can see, we have clearly visible white dots or sparkling white dots on sub some part of image. And uh, on the other side, of, uh, on the other part of the image, we are seeing that uh, water is a bit brighter. So now you guys will ask uh, like, what is the, why is it so? So this is because of the phenomena of diffused reflection as light is falling on an uneven surface. So it is reflecting back on different angles. That is why we are seeing this as uh, like, that is why we are seeing this type of result because it is reflecting at different angles. 
so and the another example is the ambulance one you guys like must have observed many times ki by uh, ambulance we write ambulance in a backwards direction and you guys must be curious to know ki why is it so like one phenomena is reflection like that is yes there is also one more phenomena behind this logic and uh, that and that phenomena is lateral inversion so that vehicle in front of that ambulance can instantly read the inverted word in his rear view mirror and give the way on priority basis so that is why that is the main reason why we write ambulance in backwards direction so now we'll see ki what is re, uh, like reflection we're done with the reflection we'll see ki what is reflection so yeah uh, so reflection is like basically it is a change in direction of light caused by a change in light of speed so here we have a figure as well ki uh, see we have a incident ray falling on water surface it is changing its medium because of which the speed is changing as well that is why we are seeing a refracting light whenever uh, when the light is crossing through the water uh, like in continuation with this we have snell's law as well uh, in the part of refraction and which basically states that it's not that complex which like snell's law basically states that the ratio of signs of uh, the ratio of sign of angle of incidence and angle of reflection is constant and that is equals to the speed of light in different mediums so like that this is that simple we'll see the same with the help of examples in the next slide so mr shubham yeah so like here we can see the fish like uh, uh, we have two images one of a spoon in a glass full of water and another one is like uh, seeing a fish in a swimming pool so like when so we are seeing the fish So yeah. So yeah, when we see fish angularly right under water. For me, video call. Shun, can you mute it? Uh, I think someone's speaking. So it's fine. It's fine. I, I think Namita needs a charger. I'm so sorry, Namita. I'll have to mute you. <laughs> it's fine. Yes. So yeah. So coming back to the examples of refraction. So like when we are seeing fish angularly under the water, light is getting refracted by water. as a result we like we are seeing the fish but that is not the actual position of the fish fish that is the perceived location that is a bit difference with the actual location same is the example with spoon as well we are like seeing a broken spoon because of the light is refracting uh, in a different medium as it is passing through air and then entering to a medium of water that is why we are seeing the spoon as a broken spoon so now changing to the dispersion and diffraction part so yeah uh like we have uh, two phenomena simultaneously so first covering the dispersion part that we will go to the diffraction part so yeah so starting with the dispersion i'll tell you the basic and very simple definition of dispersion you will understand very easily so yeah uh, it's like dispersion is splitting of white light when it passes through a glass of prism it is that simple the this phenomena you guys must have observed when the dispersion of light is basically entering into a water droplet and because of that you guys are seeing the rainbow because of this phenomena you guys are seeing the uh, the, the rainbow because of the dispersion of light and uh, coming to the diffraction part like it is a slight bending of light when it passes around the edge of an object for example uh, let us take an example of the uh, diffraction uh, i'll tell you a very basic example of diffraction so starting with the example like if you observe whenever light falls on the edge of spectacles like whenever light is falling on the edge of spectacles or glasses it it gets slightly bent we don't see clear image like the actual image we see a, a little bit bent image that is because of the diffraction part the same we will observe in the examples as well in the next slide so yeah so here we have examples for diffraction and dis uh, dispersion both uh the light uh, coming out of the clouds is a basic example of diffraction and for the dispersion like uh, it is dispersion is basically a breaking up or scattering of light cool so it is basically a breaking up or scattering of light and also you guys must be like curious to know ki why only uh, like the danger signs are marked by the red color does anyone know ki why is it so why the danger signs are marked by the red color wavelength the yeah exactly exactly this is because of the wavelength red light has the maximum wavelength that's why it scatters the least the maximum uh, the whichever color has the maximum wavelength that will scatter the least that's why we have 
like danger signs marked by the red so that people get cautious and uh, stay, stay safe and uh, also uh, like adding into the same slide we you guys can see the different type of bands here like a broadcast band radio bands microwave bands and the same you guys will learn in the next few slides which will be taken by mr rishabh raj so yeah i would like to call now mr rishabh rohila to continue further thanks a lot thank you thank you so much abhishek for uh, telling us about the basic phenomena of light Uh, it's an honor. It's I would like to tell you about uh, the ideal is uh, not just about light science and uh, the themes as you can see in the slide are very broad. The themes uh, are divided into these heads. So to take you through culture and uh, development, I would request Mr. Madhish Parekh, a National Youth Awardee from uh, India and President of Elixir Foundation. Elixir Foundation. requesting mr madhish parekh to take over hello everyone happy international day of light to everyone and i am glad to see so enlightened souls joining um, the conference live it's a great experience talking on the light day and you are able to see me and i am able to see you because of light you know the beauty of light is you know light itself is invisible like different forms of energy but the beauty is it makes everything visible with the help of light Absolutely. so i think that's us wish why we should be celebrating this and our own very existence and the existence of all living creatures on the planet and the world is because of light imagine if there was no light there would have been no photosynthesis no trees and you know we won't be having the uh, the, the the ecosystem of you know inheriting the energy from the sun so i think um, i'm i'm very glad that rishi ben shubham has taken the initiative to celebrate this very day and i congratulate the entire team for taking this up um yeah so i represent a foundation that is called elixir foundation and it is an initiative by the presidential awardees of government of india who are honored for the community works and um, it works across pan india the the greater objective of the foundation is engaging young people in community services and making them responsible for um, the fundamental duties towards the nation and we together work to make this world a better place uh, moving forward to so here uh, uh, you know light uh, as we see light you know when we see the transition of light the the sun's light is trapped into the green leaves and then then we uh, the, then the food is created and the food is uh, eaten by the living organisms and this is how the humans build themselves right and these human beings further tend to build beautiful sculptures what we see as heritage right now and also the modern scapes of architecture so so what is heritage heritage is not about just having something from the past but it is also building something sustainable for the future generations to come so elixir foundation is committed and working with unesco um, on world heritage volunteers initiative where we try to engage young people in heritage conservation and preservation and we try to make the heritage sites more sustainable Uh, we started working with, with unesco in 2017 uh, with a world heritage site that is called rani ki wow which is in patan and as a sustainable initiative we were very much successful in bringing rani ki wow on the 100 rupee new currency note of india and we were successful in taking it to the pockets of all the citizens of the country so this is a very strong message the foundation is working with and today we are working at four different world heritage sites in india three are from gujarat and one is in mumbai and now uh, the ministry of railways has very much liked the idea and they have invited us to work on the mountain railways they have the railways at darjeeling shimla and uti and i think uh, rishab and uh, shubham are also a part of the initiative and you know after, after the covid lockdown we are trying to uh, you know build up programs around the sites engage young people engage the local uh, the local organizations the local people in making their sites sustainable and building preservation of the sites so this is what we have been trying to achieve so heritage is one such initiative where the foundation is working with unesco um moving forward to uh, the situation that we know right now that is a grave situation of covid that we all are facing right um, so uh, we uh, since the very first day of lockdown in india we decided to do something for the families in need especially for the migrants and the old age people who might be facing difficulties so since the very first day of lockdown we launched a fundraiser campaign that is called we i live in city of ahmedabad so we launched a campaign that is called 
Ahmedabad fights Corona and we started a crowd raiser funder. I'm very much glad to say that, you know, in 20 days of lockdown, we raised more than 35,000 US dollars and in kind of more than 45,000 US dollars. So this is a great achievement, I must say, and we engage more than 100 young people and try to make them socially responsible in this COVID drives. And uh, this campaign was taken up by different cities like Mumbai. Uh, it, it, it named it as Mumbai Fights Corona. It was taken to Delhi. It, it is named as Delhi Fights Corona. I, I recently saw that the CM of Delhi is tweeting with this hashtag that is Delhi Fights Corona. So this this hashtag is used uh, globally, like like and across India by different cities. And we have launched this campaign right uh, right to the north, that is Jammu Kashmir, and right to the south, that is Karnataka, Bangalore, and the southern states of India. So this is how we have been working and uh, I would like to show the, some of the statistics, you know, how we have been instrumental in uh, helping people in need during the lockdown. So if you see, we have distributed, like this is specifically for Ahmedabad, I'm not talking of, of other cities, but you know, we have been working with the local administration, the police department, the commissionerate and the collectorate offices. We have been able to supply 8,000 plus ration kits, which are sustainable for a family of four for at least a week and 2000 plus individuals 0.5 lakh plus meals have been served 100 plus volunteers have been engaged and 3500 plus volunteering hours have been contributed so this is a small ray of light elixir is trying to pass on in the community you know which can inspire and bring in millions of rays such okay and we can try to shape the state of the world and make this world a better place to live in with this, I end my speech here, I end my presentation here and wish everyone a very happy International Day of Light and I hope that all these enlightened souls keep, uh, keep spreading the light, the positive energy that we see in these difficult times. Thank you everyone. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, Madhish, for such an amazing and uh, informative session. Uh, we, re we are really... Uh, it's really commendable that uh, what you are uh, doing for uh, the poor people and uh, the people struck by the uh, COVID-19. So as we were talking about uh, how the themes are very broad, to take you through science and lighting, we have Mr. Rishabh Raj, who is a, a young scholar scientist and a hardware systems engineer at Qualcomm. And also I would like to add that Mr. Rishabh has a uh, 24 publications uh, in uh, international and national journals till date. SPIE has also avoid, awarded him in 2017 for his long range of contribution in optics and photonics. So I would like Mr. Rishabh Raj to take over. Hello everyone. In day to day life, new inventions and discoveries are made. Uh, Rishabh, I think your uh, camera is... Uh, Switched off. Yeah, I haven't joined with a camera. Sorry. There is some issue for that, me. That works, that works, that works. Okay, okay, you can go on. Okay. Science and technology have reached into every sector of our life, but light always remains an integral part of all human race. Let me start with an intro to light and then dive quickly into the its diverse applications. We all know that light is a part of electromagnetic spectrum. Now you must be thinking what is a spectrum? A spectrum is the collection of all waves, which includes visible light, gamma rays, microwaves, X-rays, radio waves, and so on. In late 1600s, some important questions were raised, asking if light is made up of particles or is it a wave? In 1678, Huygens developed the wave theory of light. Huygens believed that light was made up of waves vibrating up and down perpendicular to the direction of light travels, while Newton proposed a particle theory of light. Whereas Maxwell, in his article, A Dynamical Theory of Electromagnetic Field, mathematically unified light, electricity, and magnetism. In the article, Maxwell derives an electromagnetic wave equation with a velocity for light. This modern theory of light is only 150 years old. These great milestones were followed by the work of Einstein, who, this, who introduced the concept of photons to explain photoelectric effect. 
He demonstrated that not only photons with certain threshold frequency when strikes upon a metal surface can cause the ejection of electrons. The discovery of the law of this photoelectric effect was a foundation of quantum revolution and Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize for this in the year 1922. Now you must be thinking what is photonics. We often hear terms like optics and photonics. The word photonics is derived from the Greek word pho, meaning light. Photonics is the technology of generating light and other forms of radiant energy, whose quantum unit is the photon. Photonics involves cutting edge use of lasers, fiber optics, and electro optical devices in numerous fields of technology such as manufacturing, healthcare, telecommunications, security, aerospace, solid state lightning, and many others. Now let me quickly educate you all on photonics and its usage in various applications. In aerospace technology, we use a LIDAR. That is basically a laser radar system for test and analysis of aircraft. In agriculture, we use a satellite remote sensing to detect large scale crop effects, scanning technology and infrared imaging to monitor food production and quality and sensor system for planting and irrigation. In biomedicine, we use laser for surgery, therapies such as photodynamic therapy and endoscopic procedures. In construction, we use lasers for distance measuring and alignment and three-dimensional analysis to track the progress of construction. In engineering, microtechnology, nanotechnology, we use lasers in manufacture of electrical devices, motors, engines, semiconductor chips, circuits, and computers. In geographic information systems and global positioning, we use optics and photonics in imaging and image processing to refine atmospheric and space-based images. In information technology, we use optics for data storage, ultra-fast data switching, and transmission of data across fiber optic networks. Photonics is also used in security for DNA scanning, laser forensic, retinal scanning, identification of dangerous substances, and optical surveillance. The importance of photonics is also underlined by the substantial number of novel prizes awarded in recent years, as you can see on the screen. Soon, can you put on that slide? Yes, so you can see that how many recent Nobel Prize in physics has gone for photonics, LEDs, lasers, and so on. Thank you all. I would like to end my speech with this. So uh, truly a great uh, presentation about uh, how laser and photonics is important into uh, uh, the field of life. So with this, we are also marking 60 years of laser innovation. And uh, with 60 years, I would just uh, go, uh, get you through the timeline, like how light was advancing and how we have gone through. So this is the, uh, 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 what do you call, the creative re released by laser technology, which marks 2020 as 60 years of laser since it was founded and SPIE and we as an org uh, we as an organizer we pay tribute to laser today so this is a small timeline so i would just quickly go through it and not discuss much in detail and would share this uh, right after the presentation with you guys So now coming back to IDL. So uh, how can one get involved with IDL? That is a question. If you are not hosting an event like this or something, how can you get involved in other events of IDL? So SPI has some online events for IDL, which is the photo contest. The photo contest is very renowned as you get prizes worth 2,500. You just have to submit a photo which shows uses of light or maybe 
something related to light as you see some winning pictures we have put some winning pictures on screen for you so these pictures have won prizes worth two thousand five hundred dollars and then there's a new competition called spi ideal 2020 bingo which you can go on to spi websites and ideal websites and get to know more about so going ahead talking about other events this event map was earlier shown by rishabh so Following the year 2015, we have started with giving off independent events to independent organizations all over the world. So right now as well, as we are doing this event, there might, might be multiple events happening around the uh, world and you can get to know the uh, nearest one to you by going onto SPI website and just clicking on your region and pin code or maybe just looking at the map. So you see the frequency of events which happened to Idle and it does not just stick to 16th of May. You can do it around the month of May. So you can have your own event as well. So now bringing in our next guest expert called Ms. Sonia Rohila. So we have Ms. Sonia Rohila as the uh, founder, founder and president of Shamta Foundation. She's also the VP and organizing secretary of Roller Skates and Ice Skating Association of Delhi. And as you can see in the picture, she's being awarded for her work in the field of sports and community transformation by Mr. Yogeshwar, uh, Mr. Yogeshwar Dutt who is like one of the Olympic medalists from India. So, Ms. Sonia Rohila, can we have you on screen? Uh, thank you, Shubham. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Sonia Rohila, the founder and the president of Shamta. As briefed earlier, because of uh, my passion towards uh, sports, I saw that there are a lot of talented youth in ruler and far-flung areas don't get support and gear and right gear to rise. Further, I have also been helping the community through a long-term association with my family initiatives. All this led to the birth of Shamta in March 2020. So giving a basic overview of Shamta till now, we have uh, 50 plus volunteers since inception, expert founders and decision makers aim to uplift the weaker sections of the society to ensure basic education and cleanliness to fight child abuse and uh, against cancer, to support women and uh, acid attack survivors. And uh, so this all enabled us to participate in the celebration of uh, International Day of Light. And I'm very glad to be a part of it. Going ahead, I would like to talk about uh, some key focus points and the uh, United Nations SDGs we work for which uh, we ensure no poverty, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, reduced inequalities. Further, you can get uh, in touch with us with the mention below links. Yeah, thanks, Shubham. Uh, we hope to work with everyone present here for the upliftment of the society. As it is a very popular saying, every champion was once a contender who refused to work, who refused to give up. So keep spreading the light of positivity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Sonia. That was really informative. And yes, we have Shamta. We have Shamta within us. Shamta means capability to do something. So I guess everyone can join us uh, in Shamta and make us uh, grow Shamta more. And we all can help Shamta grow and reach, it, reach its goals. So uh, going forward, the next set of person, the uh, next person we have is one of the very important persons today. And uh, he will be talking about solar energy, which is like the upcoming technology for uh, future. So without wasting time, I would ask Mr. Ankit Jain, the founder and CEO for Lumis Solar and a green enthusiast who has reached the remotest areas of India using his solar technology. He is also a global shaper at the World Economic Forum. And as you can see a picture of him, he is presenting himself at the ET Now Leaders of Tomorrow as one of the finalists. So let us, call, uh, without delay, let us call him. And Mr. Ankit, can you just let us know more about solar and how it is the energy for future? Thank you, Shubham. Hello. Yes, Mr. Ankit, you're audible. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Shubham. Uh, greetings for International Day of Light to all of you. Uh, glad to be here with uh, the enthusiastic crowd. And uh, I'll be talking about renewable energy and uh, 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 what are the things which we are doing in clean energy space today. So in this image, you can just show, see that, uh, uh, you know, Atmanirbhar power is the word 
and atmanirbhar means self reliant so this is the future we want to see moving from conventional source of energy to clean energy renewable source of energy that's how we can be self reliant on our own power and we can use your own power production for your own requirement moving forward um, so moving forward solar power it takes 8 minutes for the sun rays to come to the earth and we can harness this power of sun and power of light through solar en energy solar energy uses the technologies for pv in which uh, we can we can uh, produce electricity and this is the this is the cleanest source of energy with low maintenance cost which reduces electricity bill and decreases level of pollution recent years we have seen incremental growth in renewable energy and usage of solar which growth is 48% year on year and that is remarkable and in india 37.6 gigawatt of solar power plants are installed which is 9.4% of our total capacity so we have we have started moving renewable energy and we have lot of future coming up in renewable energy uh, to uh, move to clean energy options next so what are the options how we can go through renewable energy and the solar energy adoption there are two options one is on grid system second is the battery energy storage systems on grid systems are those which are connected directly to the grid which is used in urban areas and battery energy storage systems are those used in uh, rural areas or the far off areas where there is no grid availability next so talking about lum solar are uh, we envision making clean energy available and affordable for env everyone uh, by harnessing power of light and power of sun our vision is to reduce the world dependency of solar fossil fuels by providing innovative solar energy solution and uh, we have reached uh, you know customer base triple from 18 to 20 and we are reaching across pan india uh, through our network moving ahead 2015 i started this venture as a bootstrap venture um, before that i was working in a job and when i realized that i have to do something for the nature something to harness the power of light and in 2020 we have reached pan india we were awarded and uh, recognized across the globe because of our work 1400 megawatt of energy we have generated till now and which is equals to saving 4700 tons of carbon emission and planting 424000 trees so that is the impact we have achieved in 5 years moving ahead moving ahead as you can see we have a presence pan india and a clientele which is fortune 500 clients and we have been recognized and uh, associated by many platforms and featured in bloomberg and pc worldwide so now i'll be sharing you classic examples of how you can you know go for atmanirbhar self reliant power so this is an example by a uh, uh, project of world bank group where they are you know changing the beaches to blue flag beach and these three, we have got awarded by uh, uh, projects of copper beach udupi beach and eden beach and where we have trained all the local people to use the solar power how they can be completely dependent on renewable energy there is no grid at all it's every every power in they are using is coming from renewable energy so this is a perfect example of their own uh, uh, on harnessing the power and be dependent on renewable energy next again an example of whole industry going towards solar so this is an example in which we have installed a 600 kilowatt of system where they are saving 6 lakh monthly electricity bills and that is equals to saving 37800 trees trees and carbon emission of 8 lakh Uh, carbon emission of 600 tons Next. a whole bungalow or a whole so uh, a bungalow can go solar also by by installing their independent solar uh, solution so this is example uh, if you take example a minimum bungalow requirement is 10 kilowatt of system and uh, that cost almost 4 to 5 lakh rupees there lot of subsidies are also available so it is very much advisable to go for renewable energy options available for your own bungalow or own houses because that is the in need of the year where we'll be working towards climate change also Next. so this is a perfect picture which i want to showcase that a ray of light you know a ray of light is impacting the life of these students where indian oil one of our client installed a, a complete solar rooftop solution for a school in itawa which is in village and the whole school is running through solar and there were no power before and now that whole school is running through solar so that's the power of light 
and the power of light is that fights dark so that is the important power of light which we can see next A glimpse of our projects, which is done, and uh, we solarize every area, every part of the world, and we have solarized across the petrol pumps, whole petrol pumps. So the petrol pumps are the one we use conventional source of energy. We have solarized them completely, uh, and uh, we have you know done the projects for heavy scale, commercial scale, residential scales. So Atmanirbhar Power is a word which is a very important word, which means self-reliant power. So our objective and our vision to make everyone. self reliant on their power consumption and harness the power of light harness the power of sun to be dependent completely on your own power consumption produce your own power use your own power and be the one to uh, uh, you know be the one to be a game changer in climate change so, uh, sorry to interrupt i had a question yes uh, do you provide csr activities as well as in this sector you know like a csr can be lot of good in india villages where in the solar panels could be really helpful as a matter of fact yes yes we do projects so csr activities we do for indian oil hpcl and tata motors where we install and we provide complete solution to these organization okay. thank you so this is the uh, link of the website facebook page and twitter you can reach us and drop us any questions any queries you have we will be happy to help you at looking for collaboration with all of you and a happy international day of light thank you shubham bishop and all of you it's really great that how we are shifting to solar and other non renewable so uh, other renewable sources of energy i'm so sorry and we should do that to save our planet indeed because we are all out here to do that and with our bit i think we can save the world and also how light is playing an important role in this particular segment so rishab so yes with this we will conclude the presentation part of today's celebrations and thank yes, you yes. everyone for tuning in now we'll go into the discussion part so i have just plotted down some keywords for discussion you can take ideas from here or if you have something else you can start unmute yourselves and you can be a part of this healthy discussion we are there to assist you we are there to talk to you and everyone is out here so let's just go into the discussion round and maybe we can start with the discussions so you'll have to unmute yourselves first hi hi shubham uh, i have a question yes uh, well first of all uh, a very happy international day of light to everyone and i'm really obliged to be here among same all to, the same to, same to amazing everyone. amazing people that i yes. get to meet here yes so uh, being a photographer i love playing with light and uh, you know you just introduced something there was a competition of some sort where i can uh, you know apply with my pictures and uh, i yes. can get uh, yes recognition yes. from the uh, institution itself so i i would just help you that by displaying my screen once to you so that you can get a better understanding and yes guys you have to follow abhishek his pictures are awesome i, I follow him on instagram so you have to do nice. that and his pictures are awesome so abhishek when you go to this website which is spi.org/ideal we will share the link with you in the okay. chat section so when you go to this uh, website you see this page in which you can see there's a photo contest link you click on that okay. and the submissions for photo contest of 2020 starts today so you are on time so you have to go here and this link will open tonight at 12 it will reflect out here and then you can upload your pictures out here and the winners range up from $2500 for the first prize they go to $1500 in the second prize and $1000 in the third prize and also one of the photographs gets selected one of the albums gets selected and that person is able to go to one of the SPI conferences fully funded by them to which happens around the what do you call it it happens in all over the world it happens in france new york san francisco other places as well so you can go there and display your album and they would fund your visit to that place starting from your visa to everything and the photo contest has four different uh, categories which you can visit there there's a technology prize there is a galaxy prize there is something related to uh, what do you call uh, nature environment so yeah. you can you can go there and have a look on the sample images so these are a few sample images winner images which are being shown so this is the winner image from this year 2019 which is of lake baikal 
So that is sort the sort of images they submit. And then there's previous images as well, which were from 2017 and 18. So just to have an idea what sort of images they submit, or you don't have to get an idea, your images are awesome itself. So, and then the prizes are out here. So that is one of the comp photo comp competition SPI hosts. And then there is local photo contests as well with your nearest SPI organization. So you can Google that as well on the SPI website. So well, I, I hope wouldn't want to miss this opportunity. Yes. And yes. I would like to thank you guys, you, Vishta, and everyone here for uh, enlightening me about this contest and the very well phenomena of light in this world because that's one big important thing. And no. this presentation no. was amazing. Obliged to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And happy thank idea again. So much, Abhishek. Any other discussion point or maybe some addition or maybe some information for everybody? Anything? So I have a question here. Hey, Mustafa. Hello. Oh, how are you? I'm really sorry about the, my internet connection. Uh, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I have a question here about renewable energy. So when we're able to use our renewable energy in everyday life, in our home, car, plan, and trip? I, I didn't get you. When we will be able to use? Our uh, renewable energy from the solar? Yes, or yes, yes, yes. In our day so, life. So but, uh, UN says we have a goal for 2030 and we are supporting uh -huh. UN in that. I, Kanesh, Rishabh, even Madish for that matter. We all are supporting UN in reaching that goal of 2030 wherein we will shift to completely renewable what we say. But yes, going on with the trend with coronavirus, with pollution, with everything. And also coronavirus has helped us reach this goal because you are all at home. You see the dolphins back in Venice. You see the ozone letter get uh, ozone layer getting uh, <laughs> back to uh, its mm -hmm. original state again. Yeah, so that's correct. the goal is of 2030. And uh, I wish I was a future predictor so I could exactly tell you, but no. So the goal is of 2030 as of now. And I hope you guys help us reach that. So yeah. that, would, yeah. that would be the initiative which we are taking now to reach to that level. Yeah, so adding to that, uh, uh, adding to that, like uh, there has been a lot of work going on in renewable energy across the globe. And uh, uh, if you, uh, you must be checking out news that each and every country is, you know, uh, spending a lot on renewable energy because they have realized that uh, this is the best form of energy they can get. And uh, this is the cheapest form of energy they can get. Earlier, there were PPAs which were uh, at a cost of, uh, in Indian rupees, it's 10 to 12 rupees. And now at a cost of 3 rupees or 2 rupees, which is very cheap. And uh, uh, there are a lot of options and opportunities which are available uh, to go solar and uh, to adapt renewable energy for the countries also. So maybe in 2030, 2030 we will be reaching the goal of 100% renewable. But yeah, I can see a lot of uh, initiatives are going on and we really support that goal. And it's very easy now to go renewable energy, right? To, to uh, adapt it. So personally, if you want to take example, so if you are an individual house owner, you can go renewable, you can switch to renewable. And uh, you are a factory owner or a manufacturing unit, you can switch to renewable. Uh, and earlier, there were no options like that. Earlier, it was very difficult. Earlier, there were only farms which were there. Now it's very easy to adapt to renewable. So I urge to everyone that if you are using power and you can go for renewable energy options, then please move forward. That's how we will be reaching the target in 2030. Thank you. Yes. So with that, uh, is there any, uh, so next discussion point or any other question? Discuss yeah. one thing. Hi, hi Rishabh. Hello again. Yeah. Hi. So just, yes. just in the matter of fact that how uh, we all are facing this uh, pandemic situation and Coronavirus have all, you know, like obviously enlightened us a with a very few parameters and all that, like how we can work with less industrial work and we can create, you know, like how human involvement and less pollution can cure the environment very magically in a very short span of time. Yes, yes. So this yes. is eminently a very great opportunity for the solar, solar and renewable energy sources to, you know, like thrive upon the market. So mm -hmm. like, is this an, also a chance of, you know, like increasing prices of these as we say, like demand increase in demand leads to an increase in prices. So do you see, yeah. also see this as uh, an increase in prices because the demand surely will be increased and there are, I hope there are less number of resources available as of now. So do you so, see it as a possible thing for having increase in prices? So when we, uh, in, what do you call, relate commercialism with socialism, it does not go hand in hand. So we have to make a balance of both. If you do a lot of socialism, you cannot do a lot of commercialism. If you do a lot of commercialism, socialism cannot happen. When I look at such... I would uh, like point, to add that uh, 
you can increase the prices of the products but uh, at this point of time at uh, where we are living it's uh, i don't think uh, uh, it's not the right time to increase the prices of the products exceptionally and so, uh, thinking about uh, just the gain of uh, yes. one company or one person i yes. think we have to think about uh, us as a whole and not about uh, Yes, ourselves. yes. So, if you see the uh, current pandemic situation, a lot of places in India, I don't know about your countries, the mask price has gone up like something. The sanitizers are going up like something. Exactly, exactly. But, that but at the point. same time, there is a, a few companies which we are associated with, like the, uh, who give us still these equipments as the original prices in India as well. So a special commendation to country Taiwan, who was able to fight back coronavirus very beautifully, and then now it has sent packages which are in which there is. A paid part as well, like we pay for something, but then with that they have seven, uh, given some extra, what do you call uh, masks, some extra kits as well, just to show gratitude and uh, help from their side to, uh, to help us fight the pandemic. So we have to learn from those sources and then remove commercialism when we do socialism. To be very honest, and yes, everything has a cost. To be very honest, so uh, when Mr. Ankit uh, talks about solar, he does the CSR activities as well, and then he installs it for commercial businesses as well. So I think that creates a balance out there. And that way, I think we are uh, trying to cre- keep a balance. So now I think I have a friend from Nairobi who has to ask a question. She is our very special friend called Gatania. So can we have your question, Gatania, or your addition, whatever it was? Yeah, so thanks, Shabam. Thanks, Rishab. You guys are doing a great job. Hope you're safe. Uh, I, came in, I came in late. Yes, that's and true. I met. I I came in at the point where you were talking about Alexa. So mm-hmm. can I hear more about that? Sure, sure. So Madish, bye. More about Alexa. I think you met Madish during forum. We were all at our forum called World Youth Forum in Egypt, guys. Mm-hmm. So I think Madish was Madish sir was there as well. I think you met him there. I don't know if you didn't. So I think Madish, bye. You can help yeah. us more on the Alexa part. Like how did you? Yeah. Hi, Gatina. How are you? Um, Hi. Greetings for the International Day of Light. So. There is a youth organization that is working in India, having operations in India, and uh, mm-hmm. we are working with a couple of international organizations like UNESCO, UNICEF, uh, United Nations, and we work in engaging young people across the country and uh, making them socially responsible towards the fundamental duties of the nation and how we can engage young people in building a better society. So yeah, we, we mobilize young people in different uh, youth engagement programs and we, we have also started our international operations like we have international exchange programs uh, through UNESCO that we are uh, trying to work out on as of now. Oh, so, awesome. so for that, for that matter, I would add this that next year we have a hilly region called Darjeeling in which we have a, a mountain railway which is like the oldest and narrowest gauge of railways in the world and it is also UNESCO World Heritage Site. It still runs, the railway still runs and people go there just for what do you call sightseeing and watching. So there we see a lot of people who do not take care of this uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site and the tracks are depleted, they take the woods out of the trains and other stuff. So to, just to restore them and increase awareness, Madish Bhai has come up with this project uh, which we'll be doing next year. I think Katyayani is here. Katyani, Katyani is there, Katyani Pan? Uh, I think she's still not here. So Katyani is also with us. She's not right here. And Rishabh is also working along. So next year, we're going to start with this program wherein we'll be having a lot of volunteers from outside the country as well who will be visiting India. They will be helping these uh, locals of Darjeeling understand and ed- educate about how these railways, they have to think that this railway is a property of their own and they have to preserve it. So that is one way of bringing light to the society in which uh, we can exactly uh, what you can build awareness about cultural heritage restoration. So that's how, that's, I think that answers your question, right? So also people who missed the initial part since they joined in late, we will be uploading the video of this recorded session onto our SPIE VIT channel page, Alexa Hello. pages maybe, and then other pages as well. So you can find them easily. Uh, so we have a few people from Enactus out here. So just, just to uh, brief you about Enactus, Enactus is one of the organizations which, build, uh, which works towards these SDGs again, help us reach our goals. And uh, I think you guys can be a part of Enactus as well. And reach out to these SDG, uh, what do you call it? reach out to help these uh, achieving these SDGs. So I think we have Shanal, we have Anshul, we have a lot of people from Enactus. Maybe someone can come up with a point. 
Shanal Anshul, you there? Yeah, uh, hello. hello. Hi, Shanal. Hello, Shanal. So, could you just let us know about your works in the field of coronavirus, what you did? Because I was following their Instagram page. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, first of all, I would just like to greet everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I, I am so happy to be part of it. I, I just got the invitation from one of our alumni, Shubham Bhaiya, and then uh, <laughs> after joining in, I, I genuinely got to know so many things. And I would just like to introduce you guys with the work that we are doing in this uh, uh, COVID-19 time. One of our, one of our running projects, uh, which is called Puranya, uh, being part of it, we are uh, uh, having a campaign called Nakab in which uh, we, we have the slum ladies out there in Chennai, in Tenya Pet Slums, which are working uh, along with an NGO uh, uh, and making masks, masks, masks out there. So it is kind of providing them employment uh, in this time of pandemic and also providing masks, masks to the people who are in need. And uh, yeah, so this is one, one part of it. And then we are also, we also had certain collaborations with few NGOs to raise money so that we can provide them with the ration, uh, the dry ration and the health kits that are needed for them right now. So something similar what Elixir is doing, but at a smaller yeah. scale. So even if you do it uh, your bit at smaller scale, then you reach out to 100 people, 200 people. That is also fine because you are helping Elixir, you are helping organizations like Enactus reach their goals, what they are working for. And you are indirectly helping them. Exactly. So, exactly. so that, that's how you can do the same things at your own part. Apart from that, now uh, we'll have more discussion points. Anyone else wants to say something or maybe a question or maybe add something to the today's discussion? Hello, Shivam. Yes. Hello, Hi, Sarthak. Hi. Hello, Sarthak. So, Hi. Sarthak is also popularly known as Lord Sarthak. Sarthak, can we have your video, please? Uh, well, I'm really sorry. Ki, uh, my laptop sure. fell off yesterday or two day before yesterday. So, my webcam and, broke off. And the laptop hit the ground exactly at the position where the camera was. We are very sorry for you. Yeah, That's fine, yes. <laughs> so, No problem. If we believe so, you, That's fine, Sarthak. <laughs> yeah. So, I had something to ask or join in into the heritage program like Madish Bhai told us and uh, you are also working in that. So I wanted to like uh, I've been interested in these heritage sites and renewing those heritage sites or rejuvenating them. So I wanted to know more about this. That what would be your future projects or anything? If I can join them or is there anything like that? So I think uh, Mr. Madhish can uh, tell you about it as uh, he's in charge of uh, the whole initiative. Okay, so uh, I'm just sharing, uh, like, Sarthak already has my uh, contact details, so if, if, if anybody wants to get in touch, I will share my contact details in the chat box here, and uh, we can get it offline, and I'll just uh, share how to join the organization and how to contribute. Yes. So, yeah. Also, uh, people from India, we are working with Ministry of Indian Railways for this. Indian Railways is the longest railway line in the world till now, like, total... If you talk about total kilometer wise, the longest tracks are in India and the biggest industry as well. One of the biggest industries of India as well. One of the biggest employers in the world. Yes. yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so we are working with them for this initiative. Great initiative. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. So something else someone else would like to add? Uh, someone from SPI? Bhupesh, Ragashri, anybody? So I think people are out of ideas. People are out of discussion ideas, exactly. <coughs> I see Niharika. I see Niharika. Shrishab, I see Niharika. Niharika, would you like to say something? Hello. Niharika, you're mute. Hi, Shubham. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry, you'll be hearing a lot of noise in the background, but uh, so probably my question is for Mr. Madhish. So Madhish, I was going through the UNDP website yesterday and uh, since I'm living in Uttarakhand right now, so I saw a project wherein the UNDP had, you know, adopted a small village in the uh, hilly area of Garwal, Feli Kimura, the name of the village was that. So it is a very small community that, you know, is dependent totally on the uh, forest for their daily needs also. So what they did was they uh, adopted that village and then they somehow 
you know installed all the solar projects and solar cooker and everything so it was a very great project and as i was wondering it was a great success so i though i'm not uh, really able to connect this with the solar project here but i wanted to know is there something any kind of organization or any kind of initiative that the government of india or the government of uttarakhand is planning to do wherein we can uh, run this pilot project in the other states as well so if we can do something of this sort maybe in collaboration with one of the speaker who was uh, uh, i really don't know the name as i joined a little late so one of the speaker who was working with the solar uh, projects there so is there something we can do maybe in association with the shamta in you know in the pr thing or some kind of a thing maybe some kind of initiative that we could start after this discussion today mr ankit so i think he has already left his contact details mm-hmm. you mute mr ankit you mute so further he would add on to this yeah so uh, that's a great idea nehari ki uh, i have dropped my email id over there so yeah. uh, you know uh, you can just drop a small note uh, to me and madish uh, we both live in ahmedabad only and uh, we can just check it out that if something is feasible out there we can you know work it on that gujarati is rule the world <laughs> and as as far as uh, shamta goes neharika after uh, as we are a very new foundation uh, will surely love to work with you after the covid situation uh, you know it just calms down a bit and we lower the curve of india uh, will surely love to work with you and uh, taking uh, I'll, i would like to uh, ask mr madish to add something okay so here uh, like uh, adding to your question I, we have one of a mutual friend of mine and ankit who is jaydeep bansal and he is also a global shaper he has been working for almost 10 years almost a decade uh, on electrifying the himalayan villages in uh, you know where that is next to impossible to uh, rope in the electricity cables so he has been uh, electrifying the himalayas so i can definitely uh, get you in touch with him and, uh, and 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 the other way is you know if you can identify us the places you know where you want to start the electrification project you know i and ankit can get, get in touch with the ministry of yeah. renewable energy sources and uh, you know we can get in csrs and you know we can get in corporates who can come to support us for the implementation of the project and uh, and and to add to you you know we have been already working like uh, elixir is working with tata communications and uh, we are empowering the tribal locations across india mostly they are in maharashtra near palgar district and we have been supplying them with solar power lamps and uh, which are sustainable and you know uh, we have been working with this uh, with tata communications so if you want we can help you uh, supply solar lamps even in uttarakhand if you identify the villages there that's great that's great niharika you got four organizations working for you right away so <laughs> see it's just a matter of speaking up <laughs> yo um hi Hello, guys sadhar um amazing initiative amazing session organized by all of you rishab shubham and uh, madish hi how's it going um i had a question for um, sonia sonia uh yes yes the founder so i'm in this yeah. yes so i'm in the sports industry and uh, i want to know what plans i i don't know if you've been uh, working on this or uh, I, because i saw you just established your um, npo in march of 2020 so what plans do you have um, you know through sports you know social initiatives through sports do you have i just want to know a bit more about that yeah uh actually said uh, it is like the, as i have said ki it is the association which i formed in march but i was working in this as, uh, for the sports uh, for the upliftment of sports since 9 to 10 years uh as i am a vice president and uh, organizing secretary of ice skating and roller skating so i am going to the championships and i am being to the different uh, part of delhi and we uh, i am attending the championships and i see that there are a lot of kids who have talent but they don't have the right gear because they are some they are poor because they cannot find because you know uh, ice skating equipments are really expensive like if you want to buy an ice skate it costs you around 30 to 40000 rupees indian rupees which is very expensive for a person who cannot afford it but has a talent 
so i am working towards it so so that i can provide them with some association or can get some scholarships or something so this is a very very old thing it was in my mind always but uh, i was uh, not able to form because i was working with my family initiatives also we are working towards the upliftment of the widows orphans so this was a laid back uh, you know a thought which was always in my mind but i was not able to initiate it but uh, after going to roughly 50 60 championships now i am uh, quite uh, confident or uh, i am adamant or i want to help uh, these kids because they are really talented and i want to uplift the sports and uh, i have arranged a champion two championships but due to covid uh, this won't happen uh, one in jharkhand and one in gorakhpur see yeah. in these areas there are too much of talent but they don't have the right gear so uh, after the situation will be little controlled the these championships will uh, going to happen with the help of uh, you guys or uh, you know some few uh, people are ready to uh, support with the funds and everything so and uh, we we going to find the talent and we will uh, give them scholarships to get the at least they can buy the uh, right gears or get the training so this is my whole plan and uh, let's see how it goes but two so, championships are definitely lined up and uh, as the situation uh, control uh, we going to go ahead with that great great so that's that's really a very good idea and also just to add sarthak is a very good tennis player so if he is in your country if he is in your city you have to <laughs> have a tennis match with him for sure sarthak so, everybody sarthak is a national level uh, tennis, player. tennis player so you can yeah. surely surely catch him up for that and yes we can have him at some of the events coaching some of our students tennis as well Yeah, so yeah. Absolutely, idea. Shubham. We are not restricted we, we, to one sport. Yes, we, yes, yeah, yes, we yes. are in a urge or to hunt a talent. Right, It can be right. from any field. We right. are not restricting to sports. Like I am associated with skates, but uh, you know, the uh, I'm gonna do the uh, in Jharkhand. I'm gonna do the uh, cricket championship. Another one is for the racing of hundred meters relay races. And yes, uh, it is in my mind also that I'm gonna. do something for kho kho and uh, kabaddi uh, and uh, i have already joined uh, the team also so let's see i have plans yeah yeah so um, uh, really nice. okay, so i've seen the surname so are you rishabh's sister yes yeah. yes 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 there will yeah. be, yes. be four uh, rohilas in the chat today so so sorry she is the founder I'm of uh, shamta of and i am the creative head of shamta so yesterday yesterday was international day of families you could not celebrate it so we are doing that as well out there <laughs> <laughs> so that is how it rolls anyway so any other inputs or anything from anyone so i think that i think that we will conclude the meeting yes, yes, yes. so with this it was conclude. really really good to have you all here and it was such an informative session uh, agreed uh, i'm I really would like to thank all the speakers uh, to share your experiences of life and uh, what you all went through and everything uh, it's really good to have you here and uh, happy international day of life from my side i hope this day brings light in your lives and i hope uh, you uh, there's a transformation from this day ahead yes so and, I, and uh, yes yes go ahead uh, um of uh, positivity to everyone great 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 so madish bhai any closing notes from your okay. side i'm sorry I, can i ask something please yes 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 so much so well, i'm so really much. thank Just you for for, for, yeah. for this invitation and i hope to meet again as soon as possible sure to surely yeah our discussion about the 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 united nation goals for 2030 2030 yes it's yes. Really, really important really to to see you all my friend again from wife eve <laughs> so thank you so much for meeting you again all yes yes mustafa we will meet for sure soon yeah thank you man rich bhai closing notes from you rich how are you all good thank you thank you maga thank yep. you so much you're welcome okay guys madish bhai closing notes from yeah. Yeah. So from me <laughs> okay so like every after after every dark as we wait for another dawn to come you know similarly you know i i hope that every one of us wakes up with a new light to empower this world and make this a make this world a better place and hope that we keep spreading this light and keep spreading more international day of lights like this and i also wish
always you know every day should be an, an international day of life not just once in a year but every day should be yes uh, yes. yes yes that's truly really great yes. ankit ji yeah. anything from your side ankit ji you're mute it's a great event guys and uh, once again uh, happy international day of light to all of you and uh, as we can see a lot of you know uh, uh, a very powerful audience uh, i have today and uh, seriously uh, uh, it's a very great feeling uh, to interact with all of you and uh, as i know you know when what we see when we when we born so when we takes a birth we see light right and when we goes from the earth then also is the last thing which we see is light so that's the that's the thing so light plays an important role in our life and uh, let's harness the light and uh, uh but there's a and fight for uh, you know this time right now which is going on across the world together and uh, to see a uh, uh, good future coming in for, for everyone yes. thank you yes. all of you yes that's yeah. great so with that we will conclude the session thank you so much for joining us from all over the world thank you so much thank you so much for believing in thank our ideas and supporting, ideas. supporting us thank you and for the everybody thank you rishab for such a great presentation so guys <laughs> thank Rishabh you to shubham for the first time and i think he did a commendable job abhishek uh, great yeah. job with the reflection no. reflection part so <clears throat> abhishek is a trained public speaker so abhishek is, is a very nice guy i won't tell much about him so with that thank you guys come to close and uh, thank you so much so oh, it's hard to see you go but then we have to end the session so sorry <laughs> okay so yes yes Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Happy bye, everybody. Happy Ideal. Ideal. Maybe, maybe you can. Thank you for coming. Related to Ideal, not uh, tagging Ideal. Maybe, right? Yep. We just need to meet meet again as soon as possible. Sure, sure, Mustafa. Yeah. Soon yeah. Yep. Bye, bye, guys. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.